सऊदी अरेबिया ओपन को Uh, then from, from Malaysia, in, in, I think uh, 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 Mr. Ali Al Sago, uh, one of the uh, the top winning expert, uh, and uh, very recently was made, and uh, he was a person that from under so some good work. University of Malaysia, uh, and then Mr. Malaysia there. Uh, then we have our university repository uh, again resource on on uh, the relevant material course uh blog uh, uh, page of gadalu you can find great great uh, from his and, and the present is a wonderful color colorful you, know, you will like presentation uh, 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 another example of yara africa where this is uh, into various type of slides here yes yes uh, this is uh, for cr update of uh, uh, this is a very good repository of the existing for PR policy and other things. Um, uh, otherwise, very big data. It looks like um, I'm going to have to stop screen sharing. All I can see is um, Ramesh's webcam, which is working fine, but I'm not getting any of the audio. I'm not sure why. Uh, let me go into the settings and see what's um, what's good and why I'm not. Let okay. me make it uh, another this uh, NCTU open course web. Okay, let me try again. And then uh, uh, another example. It is taking time to refresh the screen, but uh, in the way. Okay, uh, these are the examples from Japan. We have a Kagawa Nutrition University Open Course, right? then uh, Hakiyada University Open Course. Right? Uh, Japan Open Course Consortium. Their touchline is very good, so case of teaching and learning. This is the University Open Course here. A language can be a problem. Uh, so I then from South Korea, Harlem University, Hangyan University, Korea University. Korea University Open Course here. This is uh, in the Tiger University, uh, dealing with the uh, Tiger related courses. Then we have uh, uh, one PNA. This is uh, Pusan National University Open Course here. And then Shahid Behesti University, Iran. So the, uh, these are some of the references which are taken uh, from there. 
Now, uh, on the basis of the survey, you can find that uh, there are various models of open educational resources. Some are content centers, some are learner centers, and some are free centers. The examples like uh, MIT Fairfair or uh, Open Learn of the uh, UK Open University and the Rice University Connection. Uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, there can be uh, like uh, those uh, virtual universities or small uh, uh, states of Commonwealth, the USSC, uh, uh, the uh, OECR model, in which various they are uh, offered through uh, some sort of group tent and the people are invited there and then the course material is developed and offered through their uh, own uh, platform. They've done that. Uh, Paul Stacey in 2006 uh, he proposed an open educational resource framework where uh, if you are dealing with uh, open educational resources, then what kind of issues we may, we may look into, like uh, uh, policy matters, there can be legal issues, for example, license, which is uh, uh, very, very important there, then uh, business uh, uh, concerns like uh, the funding resources, the technology issues like uh, which form. Uh, how it will be distributed when the delivery mechanism, the academic issues like how to create, how to use them, like that. Uh, actually, here the, uh, the legal issues they are very important because uh, the open educational resources, uh, they uh, work with copyright. They are not against it. Actually, they can be seen uh, as an essential element of, uh, uh, you know, academic expression copyright by providing a legal mechanism for the creator who wish to and open up their content and make it available. And the Creative Commons licenses, they, uh, they in fact, they, they uh, uh, did work on this copyright. They do not replace it. Actually, they enforce the copyright. And they allow the authors to retain their moral rights and ensure proper attribution to their work. And authors who use an open license uh, for publishing, they are free to uh, reuse material in any way they wish. And this is not possible when they surrender their copyright to a, a publisher, you know, who holds the complete control uh, over the material uh, of that. And then uh, there is another issue of the quality control. Uh, in fact, it is also facilitated the, uh, uh, through this open educational because, you know, you, you can be uh, anyone, uh, particularly if it is open education resource and uh, uh, it is allowed others to uh, make derivatives out of that, then they can be corrected or uh, fixed by anyone if, if, if someone finds uh, the error. And rather in case of copyrighted or printed volumes where you have to wait for the next edition when it uh, comes from there. Uh, there are certain uh, barriers to the development and the use of certain educational resources. Uh, that uh, uh, language barrier, uh, that's now uh, uh, it was pointed out during the uh, chat session. Uh, most of the work, uh, uh, when, uh, you know, uh, if it is available in English and then uh, or in any other language, the uh, speakers of other language, uh, yeah, Pablo was saying that very much in his school of other problem that, yes. And then there, uh, there are technological issues uh, like uh, uh, Dr. Abhilash was telling that he's sitting in such a place sometimes where technology uh, may uh, act like a challenge. Then there can be legal issues, regulatory frameworks, uh, some institutions they uh, or may not want to go uh, open with their materials. And then uh, those, those kind of regulators and uh, you can say the lack of uh, uh, sharing culture. If, they, if someone doesn't want to share, some cultures do not believe in sharing for free. Uh, and I'll say that. There. So, uh, uh, what strategies we can use? In fact, uh, before, uh, I think uh, before going on for strategy, uh, uh, let me just uh, uh, share that what can be the benefits of open educational resources for uh, uh, various groups, like for learners. Uh, there are many advantages of open educational resources to them because they are uh, made available with enhanced quality and uh, flexibility of uh, resources. Uh, seeing or applying the knowledge in a wider context, uh, then their, uh, their course would otherwise allow them. For example, uh, they can have an international dimension uh, uh, to the knowledge. Then they have the freedom to access. You know, they can access it either from their home 
other work on on placement wherever they are and they get to enhance opportunities of uh, learning uh, for example i just you know saw uh, i declared under this uh, uh, cape town declaration then there is a sport uh, for learner uh, centered self directed peer to peer or social and informal learning approaches there are various uh, uh, approaches available for that then there is a scope for skill development for example numeracy through the release of generic oer which can be reused or recontextualized uh, as before our framework given by david wiley in 2007 where you can reuse it uh, repurpose it rewrap it like that and then there is an opportunity to test out the course material before enrolling compare it with similar courses that is a good advantage to the learner where they can have a some sort of a, a you know test run of the uh, of, of the course and then there is another opportunity to be involved in oer initiatives either through contributing the uh, upward oer development or uh, testing or evaluation uh, marketing activities and you know such as the uh, in vitia educator we have vitia educator and that's that like that so for something for uh, for other learners or for other staff members the the the, the, the learners they can become ambassadors for that and then they can have authentic or real uh, life learning experiences through open educational resources uh, that links to the employer or professional uh, activities these are some of the advantages for the uh, you know the, the learners of uh, uh, who want to use open educational resources uh, uh, there are advantages for open educational resources originators also like uh, uh, if i create uh, uh, some Uh, content and uh, make it available as an uh, open resource. I can have uh, user feedback and uh, open peer review. And then there are uh, reputational benefits or recognition also uh, for that. So, you know the people they recognize uh, your work. And the there are efficiency and cultural benefits of uh, collaborative approach. Uh, you get the opportunity to work across various sectors, institutions, and subject disciplines. Uh, we we get uh, particularly for like digital literacy uh, uh, in terms of uh, intellectual property rights, and reaching we we can reach a uh, wide uh, range of learners uh, from there. These are uh, advantages. And in addition to that, you know, educational institutions also uh, have various uh, many benefits. For example, they 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 get recognition and enhance their reputation. Then uh, uh, they can uh, they can make available uh, they they get a wider availability of their content academic content, and they can focus more on the uh, learning experiences. Uh, we then increase the capacity to uh, support uh, remote learners who are not able. And then uh, uh, there is an increase in sharing of ideas of practice within an institution. Uh, including uh, greater role for uh, sports services uh, uh, like that. So uh, now let's have a look on uh, various strategies. And uh, like uh, 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 Little John and McGill, uh, and they, they they said that a characteristic of open educational practice compared with conventional form is that it changes the nature of relationship. Now, what are these relationships? There can be uh, various forms of these relationships which we need to change they group it into four uh, main areas okay uh, this change is between academics and sports staff like where uh, the cases uh, where uh, again um, uh, sharing of uh, expertise uh, in particularly in multidisciplinary teams then among us uh, academics uh, where there is some cross institutional or inter institutional collaboration then the uh, individuals uh, they need to collaborate among the, uh, themselves so we need that kind of change then if there is a, a, a need for the change between the uh, 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 educational practices happening between uh, teachers and the students you may not be registered with a university and then interact in a new way And particularly, like uh, 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 in fact, IT for all as a platform, it's uh, providing its resources and expertise uh, uh, to the uh, uh, to all of us in in such a way. So it has definitely brought out a change, and many people they are uh, now they feel motivated. 
and then uh, there is a need for some sort of change between the practices happening between academics and the organization and uh, particularly uh, more of the university's activities and they uh, open up the new ideas so uh, what what can we do i mean uh, uh, in this case we can explore we can find we can we can search here in fact for open educational resources uh, yes integrating technology for active lifelong learning it for all uh, and uh, we all are proud members of it for all uh, in open educational resources we say that uh, there is no need for reinventing the wheel we must first try to explore uh, find and search for what is already existing in that and oer commons is one of the best platforms there uh, where it has uh, uh, you know organized the uh, content under uh, uh, various things I remember thousand <laughs> maybe they are sleeping. <laughs> Good, but they will come back when they realize that what loss is there. So I, I'm I'm sure that uh, <laughs> they, we we can call them our returning uh, members. So they are going away for on sabbatical and they will come back. Uh, then uh, they, uh, we can collaborate for content creation, uh, collaboration among the uh, uh, educators, among teachers, among teachers, among students, like that. And then, like uh, uh, these are our, uh, our uh, you know, work in progress. Uh, they will have to be updated <laughs> if they want to return. Yes. Uh, this handbook of open universities, because at some point of time we wanted to gather some information about open universities and we find found that all the information is not available at one place so we create this uh, uh, resource on wiki educator where anyone is free and uh, around uh, i think more than uh, 65 uh, open universities of the world uh, which are there and we are uh, most welcome to contribute to this page uh, if you know something if you find that something needs to be updated or some information is not there please feel free go ahead and update the page on the educator. Uh, you can author like this is the page. Uh, uh, this is an, an, an uh, open OER project by uh, my colleague Dr. Kalpana Gupta. She is uh, also an engineer regional director in one of the regional centers there. Like uh, Dr. Vilash uh, or uh, uh, me are uh, 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 staff members. So you can document, you can remix, uh, you can award a license and then share it as an open education resource for anyone to use it. You can curate, like Scoop uh, IT is uh, uh, one of the platforms where you can collect open educational links or uh, uh, information for easy access and uh, uh, sharing about uh, the uh, topic on it and you can make it available. Sharing is very important. You know, if I if I develop uh, some content and if I don't make it available uh, uh, to others, then there is no point in uh, make, in designating it as an open education resource. Uh, in in one of the cases, I found it very strange that uh, uh, I think on someone's page on slide share, I found a presentation on uh, OER that the download uh, link was uh, uh, not activated. So. Then it was pointed out, and then the author agreed. So, you know, the sharing make make it available on uh, multi platforms so that uh, and uh, one of the one of the uh, you know uh, uh, things we can do is uh, join Open Educational Resource OER Foundation, and uh, uh, this is the page for OER uh, Foundation. Uh, uh, which is an independent, not for profit organization which provides leadership, international networking, and support for educators and educational institutions to achieve their uh, objectives through uh, open education mechanisms. You can become a proud member of uh, Wiki Educator. Uh, like uh, Dr. Nelly uh, is a uh, Wiki artist and uh, uh, an expert on it, has uh, been managing this uh, for very, 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 very long time, and I'm happy that. Uh, I am associated with her uh, in one of the on, on, on activities on Wiki Educator and uh, uh, on monthly basis we try to find out uh, those users on Wiki Educator whose uh, page 
uh, is uh, great in some sense or they try to help as wiki ambassadors or wiki buddy others in learning uh, wiki skills or open educational resources like that uh, so uh, you 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 can you can become uh, uh, this is the main page for wiki educator i think uh, i can i have neglected wiki educator member since 2010 yes i agree with that uh, in fact, uh, uh, a, a little bit about Wiki Educator. You know, uh, uh, Wiki Educator believes that the learning materials they should be free for uh, uh, all students of the world. And uh, as the Wiki Educator, we invest uh, in educators to share the knowledge freely. Yes, we is uh, uh, addictive. Once you start uh, work on your user page, and uh, you will find that uh, you you want to keep doing it, doing it, and doing it. Uh, Wiki Educator, it was created to build capacity of the teachers, uh, develop a free learning content, and establishing an uh, international self-organizing committee through peer collaboration. In fact, Sir John Daniel, uh, the former president and the chief executive officer of the Commonwealth of Learning, uh, he was the founding pattern of Wiki, Wiki Educator, and Dr. Wayne McIntosh is the creator of Wiki Educator. Uh, it was during uh, uh, somewhere around February 2006, uh, Macintosh registered the domain names for uh, wikieducator.org, uh, wikieducator.net, and uh, wikieducator.com. And a media wiki uh, software was installed on a desktop machine uh, at the University of Auckland in uh, New Zealand. And uh, by April uh, 2006, the wiki educator was relocated to a host. Uh, uh, a server and Commonwealth of Learning provided the uh, the, the funds uh, for it. And by August uh, 2006, a strategic plan for Wiki Educator was submitted to Commonwealth of Learning as a part of its uh, three-year plan. At that time, it was 2006 to 2009 uh, under the e-learning for education sector development initiative. And then, uh, as uh, Dr. Nelly uh, says that she has facilitated so many courses on Wiki Educator. Uh, the first online training session was conducted somewhere in uh, February 2007, perhaps uh, uh, and, uh, Dr. Nelly uh, was there into it. Uh, and initially starting with uh, uh, 10 uh, registered users in February 2006, uh, so far I think by, by this uh, May 2007, uh, we, there were around 1000 wiki educator users. And uh, it, it, was a, it was a time of a great boost to wiki educator uh, uh, project when uh, in uh, October 2007, they, uh, the uh, William and Flora Hollett Foundation, they provided a grant of uh, uh, $100,000 for the learning for content project. And then uh, uh, after that also, uh, you, uh, all, we all know um, uh, Stephen Downs, he declared it as the best educational wiki in December 2007. And by this time, there were around uh, I was also the first uh, secretary of yes <laughs> of wiki educator and then uh, by the end of 2007 there were around uh, uh, 2000 registered users into it and in january 2008 the learning for content uh, the uh, project is uh, uh, launched and in 2008 uh, the uh, learning for content uh, it was uh, honored as the inaugural recipient of the Merlot Africa Network and eLearning Africa Award in the free software for OER content authoring category. Uh, you know, it has uh, 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 progressed so well that starting with 10 registered users in February 2006, uh, I think we can check it uh, right now on Wiki Educator. Uh, I think by the end of that year, we had uh, more than 67,000 registered users now. And uh, it, uh, uh, it's, it's planning, uh, as for planning, you know, it works in building capacity in the use of media, wiki, and related free software technologies for mass, com mass collaboration, that is the main target, in the offering of free content. Uh, right to on how to use wiki educator. Great idea, yes. Yeah. Uh, we will do it, uh, yes, you are, you are correct. And then uh, they work for developing free content for use in schools, polytechnics, universities, uh, vocational education institutions, and informal education settings. 
and facilitating the establishment of community networks and collaboration with existing uh, free content uh, uh, initiatives in education. So that is their main work uh, into it. Uh, this is, uh, you know, we can have country pages also. I have taken a snapshot. You can see the present mapping post there in India. Uh, this is the Wiki Educator page for India. It's completely new for me on this cousin model. Okay. Uh, this is the page for open content uh, licensing page for uh, educators, which was uh, offered as a move for uh, uh, providing how to create. Uh, this is the Wiki Educator User Expo. Uh, user page expo uh, where every month um, a personality is identified among the wiki educator uh, users who work either on their page to make it more informative more appealing or to contribute to the community for providing uh, skills or work on open educational resources and like that so you look forward to your user pages also, those uh, among you who are uh, Wiki educators. And if uh, uh, you are not there, I urge on you to join Wiki educator. Uh, maybe uh, as soon as my uh, presentation is over. So this is uh, uh, about my presentation. I think uh, I oh, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I think I can I can have uh, a, 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 just a few more minutes that uh, there have been various developments related to Wiki Educator. Open Educational Resource University has been launched, which has been hailed as an innovative uh, education home to revolutionize uh, tertiary education. You know, based in New Zealand and coordinated by the OER Foundation, it is an independent non-profit uh, uh, providing free online university courses to uh, anyone. And uh, then we have uh, uh, the emergence of MOOCs and at Wiki Educator, uh, these, uh, we call them as micro open online courses and two were held very recently. One was Synapse Planning for Educators and uh, the other was Open Content Licensing for Educators. So, and this is a very, uh, you know, largest training project, this Learning for Content, right, which uh, is aimed at developing uh, uh, wiki skills for education and are, I think around 10,000 educators so far they have been trained and these uh, workshops they are held in both ways uh, face to face as well as online. So uh, and as uh, uh, Dr. Nelly has indicated you can have a course on it and all are free uh, to uh, invite uh, uh, their other colleagues also to join in that and uh, together we can uh, work it on it and uh, uh, go go ahead so uh, thank you so much for uh, attending to my uh, presentation thank you thank you dr ramish there's an excellent question there by timmy he asked are is this a body of in other words um, oer versity responsible for licensing and accrediting open universities or education so if someone like timmy wants to take a course uh, can you answer that? Thank you. Uh, uh, okay, uh, I, I think Open Educational Resource Foundation, uh, you know, uh, they, it has anchor partners into it where uh, any educational institution they can join. They have uh, um, a three kind of membership uh, based on the, uh, you know, what kind of bronze or silver or what kind of membership they want. So accreditation in a sense is the partner institution if they want to officially get affiliated with that but as an independent learner if you want uh, to uh, study through open educational resource anyone is free uh, they can go ahead about it and let me read the question because it has gone up in my screen so what was this question and is the for licensing uh, uh, if it is a licensing for content, then uh, Wiki Educator doesn't provide any license for that. For that, uh, we have a Creative Commons uh, organization to award uh, those kind of open licenses. But otherwise, for uh, 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 you know accrediting in, in the way that uh, you together, if you want and uh, uh, get the open educational materials developed for uh, an university, then definitely uh, the uh, uh, Open Educational Resource Foundation. It, it, it works. I hope this was the question you wanted to ask. 
uh, there's a question about accreditation. Uh -huh. The question is uh, license to start an open education or accreditation of the courses. Timmy, are you asking as a student or as an organization or university? I'm not sure there. I think we can show them the uh, uh, model OER uh, uh, model for that. Uh, actually, if it is as a student, uh, anyone can uh, study uh, uh, from OER University. Uh, no problem with that. The only thing that if you want sort of uh, uh, accreditation in a way that some certification is needed, then you can get an hold among all those anchor uh, partner institutions and with a very nominal kind of fee for certification that, that the certification can be uh, awarded. So in, in terms of if it is accrediting an, uh, any university as such, definitely instead of calling it as an accredited institution of OER foundation, they call them as uh, themselves as the anchor partners uh, of that, of, of, of OER foundation. I suggest uh, Timmy and others uh, that you go, yeah, that you go into the front page of Wiki Educator, and I think the information is um, is available there. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? That was awesome. That was really, really wonderful, uh, Dr. Ramesh, because it reminds me that I have to go back to Wiki Educator and uh, get some things done there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, start the course. You're, yes. you're always a good reminder. Thank you. Thank you. There are the claps. Thank <laughs> you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Ramesh, for um, coming all the way from India to present at the Moodle MOOC. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, sometimes I wonder, we come from so many different places, where are we coming to? We're not, actually, we're not moving anywhere, but uh, it's like we're moving from country to country, even though uh, we're not. So uh, we've got participants. If you can add where you're from in the chat box, that would be great so that uh, we get a sense of, uh, of the world right here in our, uh, wherever we happen to be. So we've got Mexico. So Pablo, you're back in Mexico. You're not in um, Venezuela. Algeria, another one too, Nigeria, sorry, Nigeria and Algeria, uh, Southeastern USA, <laughs> all right. And uh, let's see if someone is from Second Life also. Second Life, <laughs> where in Second Life? Uh, <laughs> My my presentation half on of that day. <laughs> India, we've got India, Delhi, Paris. Yeah, Paris now, right? That's what I thought, Pablo. I thought maybe you were back in Mexico, and we've got oh there, Nancy's. Uh, are you coming from Chilbo? Anybody coming from Second Life here? Chicago, right? Of course, Harriet's from. Chicago. Yeah. Chicago is a country on on its own, isn't it? And Adrian, where is Adrian from? I don't see uh, your country here. And Calaf, UK. All right, so we've got the United Kingdom and one more person, I believe, um, that we don't know. Danada, where are you from? Danada, Misba, Kalaf, Alexandra. We've got a few other countries here that haven't been mentioned. Greece. Yeah, so, okay. so, the, uh, so we've got everything. We've got the world here. Okay, I think we've got every continent except Australia and. Um, because it's probably in the middle of the night. All right, so thank you everybody for joining. Uh, Tom has added a link where we can continue the discussions. And I see Pablo's going to be in Greece, so you can meet Alexandra.
It looks like it's nighttime in India. All right, so thank you very much, everybody. I'm going to close the session and um, share the link with you from YouTube. Thank you. Thank you. Join us in, um, in about two, three hours, two hours in the uh, showcase for Moodle, Moodle for Teachers Evo for 2014.